His Excellency Sergio Mattarella, President of the Republic of Italy, Honorable Chair of the 42nd session of the FAO Conference, Distinguished Independent Chair of the uh, Council, Mr. Mabubu, Honorable Ministers, Head of Delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the 42nd session of the FAO Conference. I highly appreciate all the support and the solidarity from the Holy Pope Francis during the past two years. This first virtual session of the conference in the history started with the record breaking 1,332 participants from around the world. The conference is honored by the presence of the 119 ministers and the vice ministers. Honorable guests, we are at a critical moment in time. We see the convergence of fact that if the ignoring the threat to prevent us from the any global hunger and the malnutrition in all its forms. The number of the hunger people in the world increased by 10 million in 2019. The pandemic continues to deliver a severe blow with another 132 million of the chronically hungry people in the world by the end of 2020. The map shows the significant impact in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. In addition, 155 million people in 55 countries manifested the crisis level acute food insecurity. This map displays the latest integrated food security faces classification IPCs and the color harmonizes CH acute food insecurity classification across the world. Countries in IP3 or above Elaborated in the orange are the in the crisis that could end in the PC4 or above if action are not taken immediately. This is the case of countries in conflict and those that suffered substantial climate shocks. When looking to the other forms of malnutrition, child standing remains acceptably high. Overweight and obesity continue to increase in rich and poor countries alike. The number of people living with the obesity ex existed that of people in hunger in 2012. And more than 3 billion people in the world cannot afford even the cheapest healthy deaths. Understanding our present allows us to determine the future we wanted to reach. And we know where we need to be by 2030. And the rushment has been reduced everywhere to be maximum of 5%. Healthy deaths has have to be affordable for all. Overweight has to be reduced everywhere to levels of 15% similar to what it was in 1980s. Obesity needs to be reduced to no more than 5% in any country. Children stunting needs to decrease significantly. Inequality needs to be reduced substantially for a sustainable reduction of rural poverty. We need to achieve the land degradation neutrality increase the efficiency of water use in agriculture and reach the Paris Agreement target. Distinguished participants, the agro-food system covers the journey of the food from a farm to table. This includes growing, harvesting, and processing, distributing, training, and consuming. It also encompasses um, non-food products. This, this also constitute the livelihoods and all of the people as well as the activities, investments, and choices that are played a part in getting us these food and agricultural products. To get to where we need to be by 2030, we must perceive the challenges facing us through an agri-food system lens and act holistically. Our agri systems are not delivering the food security and nutrition outcomes we wanted to achieve. Poverty and inequality are endemic in them. They are the largest economy system measured in terms of employment, livelihoods, and the planetary impact. Worldwide, 1 billion people are employed in the agri food system, another 3.5 billion people earn their livelihoods from the extended systems. Ladies and gentlemen, 
global food security is facing multiple challenges. The number of the hungry people has been rising since 2014, and the pandemic is aggravating this situation. Conflict, climate extremes, economic downturns, all this and my effort to end hunger, food insecurity, and inequalities. The growing world population increases the pressure on our natural resource, and we need to ensure access by all people, not only to basic food and also to the uh, nutritional foods. All of above has to be faced under immense challenges. More than 30% of total global land is degraded. More than 20% of world aquifers are overexploited, and our agro bio biodiversity is under threat. There is a secular interconnected impact across agro food systems and other systems, including environment and health systems. This includes more virulent outbreak of plant animals, pests, and diseases. COVID-19 and other diseases are rooted in the environmental chain. Our agri-food systems are not only victims in this interconnected route, but they are closely involved in the degradation of natural resources and health, including pandemics and other diseases. If a comprehensive assessment of the world forest last year shows that Forest cover, an area of just over 4 billion hectares or around 31% of total global land area. It also tells us that the proportion of the land covered by forests, while the sustainable development goals indicators is decreasing. In the last 30 years, the world have a net loss of 178 million hectares of forest. Ladies and gentlemen, more than a year into the pandemic, we are witnessing the scale of the long-term impact on the agri-food systems. And how has welfare, the food security and nutrition situation around the world, and especially in food crisis countries, the pandemic and the related containment ratios have uh, intensified the pre-existing drivers of uh, fragility, as shown in the slide of the, for the food crisis countries widening inequalities, exposed structural vulnerabilities of local and global agri-food systems, hit the most vulnerable groups and particularly hard. Hunger has increased in rural areas and in the city, not only in the poorest nation, but also in upbeat income countries and even in the developed nations. Across all developed region, income of rural households have been negatively affected due to the reduction in farm on farmer sources of income. Despite all these global food production have up well throughout the pandemic, at the aggregate level, food production continues to rise in line with the past trends. For 2021, aggregate food production even expected to rise above former rates. The slide shows how resilient the agricultural agri-food system, uh, despite the pandemic and its containment measures affect agricultural trade worldwide. Trade, specifically imports in food and agricultural products have held up remarkably well so far. Measured in 2015 US dollars, agricultural trade continued to expand at a pace slightly above the longer term trend, the faster, Expansion of the value, best vessel, vessel, vessel uh, quantities implies rising prices for traded food products. This is captured by the next slide, depicting the FL food price index. For many developing countries, this results in the record level of food import bills. Despite the resilience of agro food systems, FL food price index averaged. 127.1 points in May 2021, this is 40% higher than at the same period last year. Rising for 12 months in a row, the index is now only 7.8% below its peak value of 137.6 points registered in February 2011. The surge of last month reflected the recovery from the pandemic. This brought an increase in the demand for oil, sugars, and cereals, along with the firmer prices of meat and dairy products. 
in very general terms of the past year's tired supplies and amidst strong international demand pushed up prices of most food commodities. It is sometimes this reflects some vulnerability. Any climate shock that reduces global production and any increase in the demand by the bigger importing countries would put pressure on prices. Trade restriction could also impact prices. Shrinking global reserves reduce the buffering capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, from day one, as your DG, I worked intensely to forge world-class internal governance and organizational culture. And indeed, in the past 22 months, FO underwent the deepest transformative action since its creation. We established a modular, flexible structure that allow for the optimal cross-sector collaboration. This also our members' priorities and respond best to the emerging needs. Our offices now play the vital cross-cutting function. Our divisions house FO expertise and provide support. The aim is a stronger and a coordinated focus of FO on the SDGs. The new office for small island developing states seeds, LDCs, LLDCs ensures that the special need of these vulnerable populations and the countries are met. Office of Sustainable Development Goals coordinate the cooperative engagement in the 2030 agenda follow up and review. The Office of Emergence and Resilience, OER, provides support for strengthening emergence and resilience uh, aspect. The Office of Climate Change, Biodiversity and Environment support the members' response to the cha challenges of climate change, biodiversity loss, and environmental degradation. I established the first ever post of Chief Economist at the FO, pushing among other priority big data, geospatial analysis, and digital innovation. FO first ever Chief, Chief Scientist is uh, ensuring the robustness and the breadth and the independence of scientific approaches in our work. The new Office for Innovation consolidates and strengthens FO innovative spirit. We strengthen the existing office and teams, combining partnerships and UN collaboration into one division, establishing new divisions for project support, for logistic services, and for food systems and food safety. We created a new post like a standalone ethics offices and ombudsman. We put a special focus on our centers and the, their strong collaborative function. We stress the FL you know, Investment Center and also the joint FL WHO Center. And we strengthen our collaboration with IAEA and establish a joint FL IAEA Center. Our reform went even further by modernizing our method of work and improving transparency like revoking our web presence and all our meetings and the interactions and the speeches are publicly available. I established the co-leadership team comprised of three deputy director generals, chief scientists, chief economists, and the director of the cabinet. This dynamic team supports me in all areas of organizational mandate and amplifies the new club collaborative approach of FAO. No more small kingdom, we broke down the silos. We empowered the various level of management. Another innovative first, the dual reporting system, ensure the transparency and the teamwork. This is the primary raw A and a secondary raw B within the reporting line with the B raw playing a complementary function and with the mutual reflex support and the update. We focused on the creating a health and a productive work environment. Another first thing in FAO history was established the women's and youth committees. They drive a career enrichment and engagement with the FAO and also as a platform for members engagement. They also play a very positive role in the creating a sense of the uh, togetherness and the belonging in the past year, especially during the pandemic and difficult time. We build a big family value here. This is a new FL that is welcoming you today. 
and the organization side is three dimensional transparency and the teamwork. A new FAO with a flat, accountable, co cohesive structure that becomes more efficient and effective by reducing exchange costs and minimizing bureaucracy. And an agile, inclusive, innovative organization that is focused on better serving its members. And the FAO that expanded its collaboration with partners across the world, with globally recognized knowledge and expertise, and by being at the forefront of the providing support and making a difference. This is the new FL, strongly rooted in the 75 years of history, guided by the best test and focused on its original mandate. Ladies and gentlemen, analyzing the changes and the development around us begs the question, how can FL become even more fit for purpose? I believe that has to be a, a dynamic organization which support its members in the transformational change needed to achieve the SDGs. An FL that opens the door to the fascinating world of a digital food and agriculture. Because the future of agriculture needs to be built on science, innovation, and the digital application. Innovations in technology, policies, business models, and the mindsets will be the by people and for people. Digital application can produce a significant gains in terms of increased efficiency, facilitate good functioning of supply chains, and enhance sustainability. FO needs to lead the global efforts to make this future of agri-food systems a reality. In the last 22 months, we have established a digital FO that connected all employees and overcome distance and the time zones. The organization has shown an extraordinary capacity to move to the new working modalities during the difficult times. The new web presence reflects the central role of our mandate, accessibility of a platform to members, farmers, consumers, and the partners. We are continuing to spearhead the holistic concept of digital organization within UN family, being well ahead of the care. FO needed to get our members on board with our flagship hand in hand initiative that is evidence based and country owned. The initiative is again strengthened as a mechanism for bringing diverse actors together to help the least advantaged countries and people to eradicate poverty and end hunger and malnutrition and reduce the inequality within and among nations in this. 39 members that have joined the initiative so far. Key support is provided to identify channel funding to the areas where the biggest economic opportunities can be unlocked. The initiative is geospatial platform with big data analysis and advanced geospatial modeling has over 38,000 uses from the nearly all FO members. And we launched the 1000 Digital Value Program. The program focuses on the digital technology to improve production and agro-business management and the related marketing-oriented and the social services of agricultural processes with an e-agricultural to improve productivity using information and the communication technologies, ICT, and the relevant digital solutions with a digital farmer service to enhance the farmer's accessibility to social and economic services, digital service of rural transformation to enhance the delivery of a public service in health, education, jobs, welfare, ecotourism, and agro-tourism. This holistic approach brings all the digital elements needed to support agri-food system transformation and the rural development needed to achieve the SDGs. Ladies and gentlemen, to respond to the global challenges, an opportunity to continue building an organization that is fit for the purpose. We are proudly proposing the strategic framework 2022 to 2031 and a midterm plan 2022 to 2025 and a program of work and budget 2022 and 2023. An unprecedentedly and impressive process have ta has taken place to develop the strategic framework for nearly 18 months, we had extensive, inclusive, and transparent consultation with members and other key partners, both formally and informally. 
We back to this with the in, an intensive internal process join on the presence and deepest of FL knowledge and expertise. And we launched a foresight exercises devil further into the global challenges and opportunities. A top down and the bottom up approach the needs coming from members and FL global man, mandates, normative strengths were well embodied to allow FL to provide the maximum support in transforming agricultural system at the country level. All three documents build on and complement the organizational structure and management change already put in place to make FO a more modular, flexible, and agile organization. We have uh, presented a concise and a clear strategy and narrative supporting the 2030 agenda through the transformation of to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and a sustainable agri-food system for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life for better, leaving no one behind. All aspects of FAO focus for the next period that I have been talking about since my manifesto was uh, contained in this narrative. The SDGs, efficiency, inclusiveness, resilience, and sustainability, the overarching importance of agri-food systems, the four batteries, and of course, the focus on leaving no one behind. The three dimensions of sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental are reflected in the four batteries and in the agri-food system approach. Four cross-cutting accelerators of progress will be applied in all our programmatic interventions to maximize the efforts and facilitate the management of trade-offs according to national priority. These accelerators are technology, innovation, data, and complement governance, human capital, and institution. The 20 program priority areas identify are interdisciplinary issue-based technical themes and represent the FL strategic contribution to the specific SDG targets. They are framed around the four battles and by the themes well, the FL has a comparable advantage track record and ability to act in our major initiatives. The program work and budget of 2022 to 2023, 2023 translate the strategic narratives into the biennial program work. It has been developed around three core principles, maintaining a flat nominal budget, namely uh, 1,005.6 million US dollars, covering all increased costs without negatively impacting the technical work and keeping the organizational structure currently in place. Within the flat and no nominal budget, resources are relocated to the high priority area, including the new program priority areas, the Office of the Inspect General, and the multilinguism. You can see first time I present the slide in all six FO official languages, highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, when everybody added the firewood, the flames of the bonfire rising high. No member or organization can tackle the global challenges in food and culture alone. The strategy framework highlights FO role as a facilitator and the enabler of the change. It encourages us to be more in innovative and bold and open. Our mission is to build a transformative partnership that addresses systematic change in a sustained manner. The key is regional integration, multilateral cooperation, with FO members being the drivers of change. FO already played a major facilitating role, but we aim to do more through our various initiatives and reinvigorated South-South and Triangle Cooperation. Multilateralism is the way to address the global challenge, include the prevention of future pandemics. FL is active in scaling up joint UN activities on the ground, formulating the collective UN assistance and aligning it with national priorities. I highly appreciate all host countries, our offices around the world, 
who have kept our employees safe during the pandemic. And here, I especially thanks to the Italy government for providing vaccination within its national program to all UN colleagues and their dependents who were interested in. If it was engagement with the private sector is vital to strengthen it, accelerate its support to its members. We have launched a digital FO connected port and a one-stop shop to, for the private sector engagement aimed at agro-food system transformation. We are establishing productive and results-oriented partnership with the indigenous people, civil society organizations, and the parliamentarians, producer organizations, and the cooperatives, and academia and the research institutions. And we are energized to scale up existing cooperation, support our mission and the new strategy framework. Other ministers, delegates, strengthening the impact of FL work at the country level has been at the focus of mine since day one. For the first time, we started a comprehensive review of the country office's business model to rethink and change the way we work to achieve the great impact by introducing digital administrative processes, improve human resources management, and strengthen the employee engagement. The country office transformation aims to achieve the more empowerment and streamlined processes. Across the globe, we see the democratization of FAO working place with the great internal communication, teamwork, and the participation. We are fostering collaboration and break down the silos between the region, sub-region, and the national offices and teams. We are creating multidisciplinary technical groups to improve the quality, efficiency, and the effectiveness of technical assistance and coordination with the members. We strengthen the international internal control framework for field activities to the highest standards of accountability and transparency. We want our representative to stand shot to shot with the farmers, policymakers, and to be trusted partners of national authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, since March of 2020, the situation has been unlike any other in the living memory. The pandemic is a powerful weak up call on the fragility and the shortcomings of our agri-food systems. It is also an opportunity to, re, to re, re evaluate how we address the, the root causes of poverty, hunger, and the inequalities, a, a chance to build a resilience against the threat and to, to start anew. And more importantly, the pandemic reminded us of the fundamental importance of the solidarity. We have seen the value and the potential of a multilateral cooperation the courage, the resilience of food heroes around the world. I'm proud that FAO was at the forefront of the, this battle to rest to the biggest challenge of our lives. We reinvented the way we work, communicate, and deliver. We adapted our approaches to strengthen our partnership and sharpen our focus. We put the people and their needs at the center of our work we design and provide game-changing solutions by combination of cutting-edge technology with expertise and the determination of our teams around the world. All this well done thanks to our lawyer employees, my senior teams, and your trust with solid support. And we need your consistent commitment together. And only together, we can turn the tide achieve the sustainable and inequitable future with zero hunger for all. You may manifest a road that we are what we think and that the innovative thinking will lead us to a different journey. Just over 75 years ago, the thinking of our founding members started the path to eradicate poverty and nourish the world through the power of food and agriculture. And I cherish this history, history that teaches us of the idea that was born at the Allied Food and Agriculture Conference in 1943 in Hot Springs, Virginia, USA. 
of the organization that was established in 1945 in Quebec City, Canada by 42 nations. Of the FAO fundings, it's the first home in Washington, DC before moving to Rome just 70 years ago. Of all the outstanding pioneer work done by the FAO over the last decade, with the both proud and the humility that I'm carrying forward this noble mission. We are ready to continue the hard work with you, fully aware that the history is made by, recorded by, and evaluated by the people. I invite you, dear brothers and sisters, to work with us on a path that will lead a dynamic FL for a better world through better production, a better nutrition, a better environment so that all humankind can have a better life. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Chair.